Joining me now is the newly elected chairwoman of the Congressional Black Caucus and a member of the Judiciary Committee, Congresswoman Karen Bass. She was one of those who voted for impeachment last week. Congresswoman Bass, do you think there's enough evidence to move forward with impeachment proceedings? I actually don't think that there is now. I mean, what came out uh, on Friday uh, I think is very, very significant, but I really think that we should not move forward until Mueller releases his report in its entirety. And then even if we are pushed in a position where there is so much evidence of criminal activity, collusion, conspiracy, et cetera, that we have to move to impeachment. You know, people do have to remember that the House is just one half of the process. Mm -hmm. It also would have to take place in the Senate as well, where he would be tried and convicted. And you and I know there's no way that that's going to happen right now. However, as more and more evidence comes out, it is possible that the Republicans begin to crack because it's pretty hard to say, well, yeah, he committed a crime, but we can ignore that one. And many of the Republicans are saying that right now. Well, you know, that was just uh, related to a campaign. So I don't know if that's an impeachable offense. Now, do you uh, look at the fact that uh, you now have a situation where uh, the nominee for attorney general, Mr. Barr, uh, is going to come in front of the Senate. And he has now, it has been reported, was either seriously looked at and possibly interviewed to be part of the defense team of President Trump in this matter. And this matter will now be under him and reported to him, the Mueller uh, report, if he's in fact confirmed. Will that be an issue? Oh, I think that's absolutely an issue. But let me also just say, too, that you and I know over the last two years, there has been no oversight. This president has not been held accountable for anything by Congress. And so when we take the gavels in January, we'll actually be able to provide the oversight that hasn't taken place over the last two years. So when you t are talking about moving forward with impeachment, there is the Mueller uh, report, but there is also our responsibility to do oversight. And in doing that, there is a huge possibility that we will find more and more reasons. For example, all of his conflicts of interest have not even been looked at. So I think that it would, it's very important that we not rush. But the other reason why, too, uh, Reverend, is that there's so much that Democrats want to do that has not been done over the last two years. Shoring up the Affordable Care Act, addressing income and inequality, prescription drugs, voting rights, looking at voter suppression and voter fraud something that the Republicans always yell about. But where did we see voter fraud in this election? North Carolina, Georgia, and it was on behalf of the Republicans. So we have so much work to do. I don't want us to get completely wrapped up in this and not be able to move forward on a proactive agenda for the American I, I people. I want to push you on that because sure. there were record uh, numbers of voters in the midterm elections. And many voters are saying they're concerned about health care, they're concerned about right. criminal justice, they're concerned about voting rights, climate change, gender equality. The Democrats should not be just focused on going after Trump, but they exactly. also have to deliver for what the voters gave them the majority in Congress for. Exactly, and that was exactly the reason that I listed off all of those other issues that we need to address. It's not like we won't address impeachment if that's what we're really required to do. But again, after so many years of Republicans being in charge, we are backed up with issues that we want to address. Criminal justice mm -hmm. reform, you know we had the bill that stalled in the Senate. It doesn't look like it's going to pass. Maybe there's a possibility for us now to deal with sentencing reform and prison reform. My focus is going to be on the plight of women in the criminal justice system. So I just think we have a large agenda. And and I don't want to see us get stuck on just looking at, uh, at Trump. Now, you are the newly elected chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, and it has yes. been reported that there is a difference with the minority leader who will be, uh, uh, we presume, the uh, speaker after uh, the new Congress is seated in January, on giving up the, uh, giving or conceding to one of 
uh, the Democrats questioning her on the question of seniority on chairmanships or well, not seniority as much as limiting term the terms that right. they can serve as chair of committees. Do you support the limiting of chairs or you do not support it? And how do you feel about your colleagues in the caucus that says this will go against minorities, blacks in particular, achieving chairmanships? Well, let me just say a few things. Um, next year, when Democrats take over, uh, members of the Congressional Black Caucus will be chairs of five full committees and 28 subcommittees. And so for many of these members, they have waited a very long time to receive these, these uh, positions, and I think that they absolutely should be able to take those gavels. I will tell you that uh, it is not just an issue for the Congressional Black Caucus. There's over 21 committees, five of them being chaired by members of the CBC. The majority of the committees are chaired by white members. Members, and white members are very, very concerned about term limits as well. And once they have achieved that status of a chair or a subcommittee chair, they're not anxious to say we only want to be there for a few years as well. So I think it impacts the Black Caucus, but it impacts the entire Democratic Caucus. I'm sure at some point we will vote on it, and we will see whether or not uh, term limits will be in place. The Republicans have term limits, and a lot of people believe that's one reason why they have a lot of havoc all the time in their caucus, because it's a dog-eat-dog -dog environment. So we will see, but uh, I'm very excited at the role that the Congressional Black Caucus is going to be chairing. Fifty-five members, Reverend, for yeah, the first time. Nine start. new members. Right. Now, you and I have worked down through the years, particularly in California, but even beyond, on criminal justice issues and yes. voting rights. As the new chair of the caucus, a Congressional Black Caucus to be specific, will there be an aggressive plan by the caucus to really enhance in these areas? Absolutely. Um, it's going to be one of the first issues that we address is the Voting Rights Act. And, you know, one of the things that we need to do is really establish a record. And, boy, did this midterm election give us an awful lot of evidence. I happen to personally believe that Stacey Abrams is the one that should be sworn in as the governor of Georgia. I think that election was just stolen from her. And now there is this crazy evidence out of North Carolina where that election might wind up being invalidated. And so, in terms of establishing a record as to why we need an enhanced Voting Rights Act and need to uh, repair the damage that was done by the Supreme Court, that is going to be one of the first orders of business. We do have a bill that's going to be introduced. H.R. 1 has several components to it. Expanding voter participation is one of the components. So you will see legislation move forward in January, but a lot more needs to be done specifically and separately for the Voting Rights Act, and that's going to be issue number one on our agenda. Congresswoman Karen Bass, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for having me on.